I keep on seeing on social media that there are a lot of people who say, oh, breaking the tech is so easy. Like I did it. And there's a big thing called survivor bias where you're like, yeah, because I did it like other people can do it too. Mm -hmm. And although I agree because yes, I went to the coding bootcamp and I broke into tech. There were many factors that supported me in that process, like my network, my college education, my location. I was in the Bay Area at the time, uh, the influences around me. So I had, I was able to find a mentor who had been in industry for five years. Uh, so there's a lot of things that supported that. And people are so blind to their privilege sometimes. Mm -hmm that they just say breaking into tech is easy. So when people struggle to break into tech, they feel like it's their problem instead of how the industry works. And like you said, getting that first job is the hardest thing. And mm -hmm. everyone else is thinking there must be something wrong with me because I'm not getting my first opportunity. No, no, no. The industry is like artificially like making it really difficult <laughs> for people to get entry level jobs. And I just want people to understand that like, it's not you. If you don't get that job right away, it's going to be a process and you have to build all of these other pillars to support you along the way. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll actually, I'll push back on that a little. If you are continuing to apply and you don't get the results you want, then you are probably doing something wrong, right? Like I tell people <laughs> yeah, that's who come to me and they're like, I've been job searching for six months and I'm not getting anything. First of all, six months is way too damn long. Like you should just be trying something for a month. If it doesn't work out, try a new strategy, get your resume reviewed, get your LinkedIn reviewed, create a portfolio, go into open source, Da, 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 all these different things you can try out. Networking obviously is a big plus. I think there are a lot of more, there are more communities now that like cater to us, which is great. Um, still not enough, but you know, there's some more out there. Um, and I think like a, an untold thing about breaking into tech is that a lot of um, jobs you can get are by referral, right? So it does really help if you know someone at the company, you know, for Adobe and Viper, like if you're interested in those, I think Melissa and I would be happy to talk to you more about those. And I think that's where it really helps to have like at least a point of contact to just give you some insight. When I was applying to Slack, I reached out to like 10 different people in Tequeria's Slack community, and most of them did not respond to me. But four of them did, and I had four really good discussions that gave me insight and made me feel more confident going into my interview. I would not have done that like if I had not taken the initiative. And I think that's just like one strategy of many that you can take. But definitely like if you're if you're job searching for too many months, it's not working, you gotta change something. So I will say that. Um, I'll also say another misconception that I personally like had a lot of grief over was data structures and algorithms. So that's historically how technical interviews are done at most tech companies. You do like a pairing session, or it's just like you figuring it out through like a hacker rank, um, different problems that use really heavy data structures and algorithms. And this is something you would typically learn in like an undergrad CS course. So already you're kind of at a disadvantage if you don't have that. Boot camps caught on though, so they teach that as well. They have dedicated sessions to that. All to say though, uh, for me, like those have never really reflected like the capabilities, right, that you have as a software engineer. Like I never really use those in my day to day work. I am. Uh, it is a bias, though, because I do just like full stack react development. I think someone who's maybe doing something different may be using those more often. So I'll, I'll share that disclaimer. But there are companies that don't uh, use that to interview. So if you're like trying to break into tech you like suck at data structures and algorithms like I did, or you just get a lot of anxiety and you sweat and you're like, oh, but I, yeah, but the reverse binary search tree is like, uh, you know, that's how I was. Like I always fumbled. I always screwed up somehow, or I forgot something. And I was like, can I Google this? Like, that's what I was thinking internally. Cause I would have it like, like this, you know, or just give me 30 minutes and I'll solve this for you. Um, but just like, don't hover over me. And, um, there are companies that don't do that. So just like a heads up there, like I had a solid portfolio and that was like something I, I learned the hard way. So cool. Those are some good misconceptions that we broke down, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and also a big one, breaking into tech doesn't mean software engineering. There's a lot of other jobs that you could do. Um, 
So a lot of people think, oh, I need to know how to code to work at a tech company. And that's not true. So figure out what are your strengths and what you like to do. And know that working at a tech company uh, can be very fruitful and kind of break those generational disadvantages. Like a lot of us come from low income families, especially as immigrants. So working at a tech company can really be a leg up for your family over the long run.